Hello, in this video I'm going to review this MacPo X3 Pro 10 Watt diode laser. Let's see if it's any good. Let's get started. So this laser engraver was sent over to me by Geek buying free of charge, but I'm allowed to tell you my honest opinion and this is what I'm going to do. It arrives in two boxes, one of them which is the laser itself and another one is a honeycomb working table. At the time of filming, this unit cost 279 euro, including the honeycomb table, which is for a 10 watt diode laser sounds really good. Let's see how good is this for this money. So let's talk a little bit about the specification of this laser. As I already told, it is a 10 watt diode laser. The laser spot size is claimed to be 60 by 80 micrometer, which is quite normal in this range. The engraving area is 410 by 400 millimeter. It is a fixed focus laser, so it means you have to manually set the laser height yourself, but this is also quite normal in this price range, so you do, you do not really get out of focus in this price range. And it, it comes with some nice safety features. There is a tilt sensor built in, which means that if you if it's basically falling off the table, then it stops the laser itself. And it also comes with a flame detector, so if it's catching on fire, most probably it will detect and shut down the laser. These are pretty nice. It comes with limit switches on the X and Y axis. It comes with an air assist pump, and it can be used with both GRBL and Lightburn. In this video, I'm going to test this now with Lightburn. So okay, as the next step, let's put it together. I will not show a detailed assembly, because then the video would take too long. It's, it's not that difficult to put it together I assume so so I will just show a sped up uh, video so let's get started So now that it's all put together, let me summarize my opinion after the build process. I would say that the build instruction was quite okay. I would not say it was perfect, but it was okay. It took me roughly 20 minutes to put it together. The frame itself is 90% the same like the Sculpfan S30 that I tested a couple of months ago. It was a 5 watt diode laser. You can find in the video description below the, the test of that 5 watt. 5 watt laser engraver. It's all from aluminium extrusions, which is quite sturdy. It's lightweight, but it's strong enough for the application, definitely. All the axes are running on V wheels. These V wheels, what you can also see on 3D printers. The Sculpfan S30 had a linear rail on the X axis, but other than that, it was also with these V wheels on the Y axis. But honestly speaking, for laser and waving, it does not really matter because there is no load on it and even significantly more expensive machines are sometimes coming with such wheels. I would say there is only one thing that I dislike about the build of this, of this laser engraver, which is the wire management. It is terrible. This tube for the air assist is super sturdy, super rigid and basically why it's moving in this direction i could imagine that it might even jump here these ca cables and tubes all together things like this so this i really don't like but other than that i would say this machine is quite quite nice it's it's well built and and it's not bad at all especially taking into account that in this 200 roughly 80 euro you can get the honeycomb table included, which is, I would say, an additional 50, 60 euro if you buy it yourself. So 
Until now I'm quite impressed. But then let's go for the really interesting plan. Let's turn it on and do some real testing. I already connected it to Lightburn. It was super easy, basically it's automatically detecting the new machine. We just set the size, give, give a name on it and, and that's it. But first I would like to show you the, the tilt alarm system. So basically if I lift it up over 45-50 degrees angle, then it will start an alarm. You can see all this LED is running up and it is turning off the laser itself and at the end you can reset it if you press for three seconds this reset button so as I told there are limit switches one of them is here for the y-axis and the other one is here next to the head on the x-axis and whenever you connect to Light burn. It is automatically homing itself. At first, the X axis and then the Y. As you can see, this is what I'm telling bad wire management. Basically, the tube, the tube of the air assist is so rigid that it's moving back and forth on the table. This is this is really terrible. Let's really do some cutting and engraving test so I go to Lightburn and you can see that the Max Pro X3 Pro is selected and maybe you could hear that it was automatically homing itself and I will use for the testing for the cutting and engraving the inbuilt material test of Lightburn you can just click on it and you can create basically a matrix I will create a 5 by 1 5 by 5 mat matrix one axis will be the the speed the other is the power let's set from 200 to 500 600 millimeter per sec millimeter per minute and the power from from 50 to 100 I will put now the material I need to do the framing and then I will hit start never forget to wear safety gaslies okay and now I will hit start So let's take a look at it. As you can see, it was easily able to cut through on the material on 100% up to 400 mm per minute. Let's see if it was still okay on 87.5%. Yeah, I can still break it, break it open. It's turned around. Yes, you can see this is also still fine. It, it, I can remove it. But on 75% it's 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 not anymore. It's not bad. I cut it from this material because here I have a comparison to the scalp and S30. And here if you take a look at it, this was basically my first trial and it was only able to cut through on 200 mm per second but when I changed to a smaller resolution then you can see that it was roughly be able to cut through on 288 mm per minute so compared to that 400 I will now make an additional test from 400 to 500 mm per minute and from 75 to 100 percent too. Okay, so let's take a closer look. It 
was able to cut through this 3 mm plied wood with roughly 450 mm per minute at 100%, which is not bad, it's for sure significantly quicker than the Scalp Fanas 35 watt version. And yeah, we can see definitely that. The next one is already not good, we did not cut it through in one direction. This is quite common on diode laser that in, in X direction the laser is stronger than in Y. I have no idea to be honest why, but this is this is the case. So basically 450 mm per minute on 100%. This is not bad. It is for sure significantly quicker than the 5 watt Scalp Finesse 30 on the exact same 3 mm plywood. I did really wanted to use the exact same sheet that I got with the Scalp Finesse 30 to make it clear. So now I will do another test with MDF and afterwards we will do some engraving. So I will try to cut the MDF from 300 to 450 mm and from 75 to 100 percent. So I did not cut through at all on these bits. Let's try to go slower then. So as you can see 200 mm per second on 100% cut through nicely. So let's do some engraving. Mac Paul's recommendation is 3000 mm per minute and 15%. So let's try this. Okay, so it's done. Let's see the result. Yes, it turned out quite nice. There are really nice sharp edges. I really like this, I have to say. It's nice and homogene. It's looking good. For sure, if you want to if you want to make it darker, you can just increase the power. This was only 15%. So increasing it this to 25-30% and this would be significantly darker. As you could see here, for example, this one's when, when it was engraving basically only lines and 2000 mm per minute, and these are super nice and dark lines here. Okay, so what are my final thoughts on this machine? Honestly speaking, I'm quite happy with this machine. For 280 euro, a 10 watt diode laser. This is pretty hard to beat, to be honest. And if I compare this to the Scalp Fan S30, 5 watt, which costs the exact same, roughly 280 euro like this one, and that one is only a 5 watt, it comes without a honeycomb, then I would say it's a no-brainer. If I would need to pick one out of the two, I would definitely pick this one. Let me also tell you some disadvantages compared to the Scalp Fan S30. As I told before, this one is coming with the V wheels on the X axis. The Scalp and S30 has linear rails. But as I already told this before, I would say this is not a big deal for a laser engraver. There, are, there is no load on this. Uh, but maybe one of my biggest disadvantage compared to the S30 is that here you cannot control the air assist via light burn. So you cannot just change that, okay, for one layer, I go for engraving without air assist and then it's automatically turning on air assist for cutting. Here you cannot do this. There is no connection between the air assist and the control board of this one. So here you have to control this manually. You have to turn it on, on manually. This is, I would say, a huge disadvantage compared to the scalp fan. Other advantages though that you have safety switches, you have the flame detector, you have a tilt switch, Okay, basically it's only triggering if it's above 45 to 50 degrees, so basically when it's falling off the table, honestly speaking. But I would do, I would program this that even if there is like a 10 degree 
changing the angle i would just shut it off because it means that something happened with the machine which could have not happened if we look at this laser power this 10 watt that it can cut with easily with 400 millimeter per minute and it cuts through three millimeter plywood in one single pass and the cuts are super clean it's it's i would say quite impressive for for hobbyists i would i would definitely recommend this machine furthermore it, it works super reliably for me i did not have any shoes no connectivity issues nothing basically everything worked out perfectly for the first time okay guys so this was the review from my side for, from this device if you want to buy one yourself you can find an affiliate link in the video description below from geek buying so you can grab no for 280 euro okay guys so that's all for this video i hope you found this helpful if yes please like the video subscribe to my channel and i hope i see you next time bye